buying laptops that don't really make sense for what they intend to use it for. They end up spending more money for a laptop with all this capability that they won't even use, or they actually start underbuying and the laptop doesn't handle the tasks that they want it to do. So today I'm gonna to help you understand a little bit more about that little label on the back of the computer box. And hopefully by the end of this video, it will kind of start to make sense and maybe will help guide you when you're going out looking for a new computer. So let's get started. So first we're gonna talk about the processor. This baby is the main component of your laptop. It is the peanut butter to the jelly, it is the bread to the butter, the sunny to the share, the list goes on and on. This part is better known as the CPU, also known as like the central processing unit. And what it does, it tells the computer how to do different instructions. So generally, okay laptops will have an i3 dual core processor. An i5 dual or quad core processor will definitely give you the speeds that you want. And an i7 or higher with four to six core processors will definitely give you phenomenal speeds that outdoes all the other ones. So you can think of these cores as like little worker guys and basically the more cores you have then it's like the more workers you have. Meaning the more work you're going to get done the faster it's going to get done. So an i3 processor will get the job done if its main use is browsing the web, Microsoft Office, video calls, nothing too extraordinary. An i5 will be more suited for you if you care about the speed, uh, your computer's performance, and some heavy gaming. Not like out of the water like with the graphics, but you know, some gaming it will be able to handle. The i7 or higher is generally for those that are doing some intense gaming or running some very intensive software such as like um, high-end video editors or perhaps maybe animation studios. That's going to be your i7s and basically anything less than that, you're probably good with an i5. So now let's talk about storage. Generally a good rule of thumb is to not buy a laptop with less than 256 gigabytes. If you're gonna be storing massive files such as videos or uh, images, I suggest you buy at least a laptop with 256 gigabytes and then maybe go buy an external hard drive uh, just to plug into your computer and then you can transfer all your uh, photos or your videos or whatever you're using it for onto that. That's personally what I do. For me, I don't store anything that I need long term on my laptop. What I do is I keep it all on an external hard drive. Files that I do use often, um, they do get to stay on my laptop. So if it's important, it goes on the hard drive and no questions are asked. So I'm just going to give you some metrics to help you understand how much storage you can actually get with 256 gigabytes. So I just want to note that these are just conversions in a perfect world, meaning the number of files stored will actually be less due to downloading software on your computer, storing other files, etc. So this would be the maximum number of files, more or less, based off of uh, just general average files. Uh, file sizes I have found. So let's say a song ranges from four to five minutes long and its storage size is four to five megabytes. So that means we can store anywhere from 51,000 to 64,000 songs on 256 gigabytes. Let's say you're storing photos from your iPhone 7 and the camera megapixels are 12 megapixels, meaning the storage size is 36 megabytes per photo. That means you can store up to 6,100 images on the laptop at a time. Lastly, the average standard movie downloaded for offline use is about one and a half gigabytes. This means that you'll be able to store about 170 movies on your 256 gigabyte laptop. So next we're gonna talk about RAM, also known as random access memory. Um, whenever you're looking at computer specs, uh, it's actually gonna be under the subtitle RAM or sometimes it'll be called memory. 
This right here is what's gonna allow you to run multiple applications at the same time. Four gigabytes is great if you're doing, you know, some web surfing and maybe like you're typing in a document in Microsoft Office. But again, generally you want to have about eight gigabytes. Eight gigabytes will let you do some gaming, maybe some video editing while you're like streaming Spotify. Nothing too crazy. Unless you're someone using heavy graphic applications or making models, it's just better to stay in that eight gigabyte range unless you really do need to spend that extra money to get the performance that you want. So thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope that, you know, this video has at least helped someone, you know, along their computer shopping journey. <laughs> and maybe you actually learned something that you may be able to help other people um, who are looking for laptops or a computer. <laughs>